So for you to get past it was huge. You got out. You basically made a run for it one day, called an old friend who had also left, and got some TLC. And before you know it, you're out. The wife tells you to F off. The children don't want anything to do with you. And th- this is where things get crazy. But you are not the only one. There are many now ex-Scientologists who have very similar stories to this. Right. You, they, they, you write in the book, stalked you, basically. They, they tailed you. They had PIs on you. We have videotape that you took of PIs that they hired stealing your garbage. Let's see that clip. Hold on a second. It's, uh... You've got it's video, uh, video three. We'll show it here. You guys can check it out on YouTube to the listening audience later. But here, well, you tell us what we're seeing here, Mike. There's a red car. Yeah, that that car was meeting up with the garbage truck. The garbage truck had picked up my garbage and driven around uh, the corner, and then stopped to make a rendezvous with Mister Ponytail, who was a private investigator who had actually set up. Um, and worked out of an office across the street from another place where they had set up a, 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 a PI watching station to watch me at the work I was doing at the time. So Mr. Ponytail paid the man, the, the garbage worker who's leaning on the garbage truck, a certain amount of dollars for the garbage worker to take your garbage and give it to Ponytail? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's and, and, you know, I, I say to the guy, hey, who are you buying the garbage for? <laughs> Who's that for? Huh? Who are you? I said, I watched you. I videoed you. And and unfortunately, I did video the garbage truck picking it up, but I lost that video. It, like, didn't record well, or something, you know, like I think one we dummy could thing. I safely assume, you know, there, <laughs> that it actually happened since they're obviously doing a deal over your garbage right now. I said to Mike before we came out on the set, I said, um, I'm, I'm prepared to make my own garbage really disgusting and dirty for the next few weeks after doing this interview. I'm going to make it absolutely, I'm going to use all of Strudwick's poop bags that'll be really really special if anybody yeah, decides to exactly. dig through. All right, so that was one incident. And then there was another incident, this is a VO2, where Mike discovers, oh, the pretty little birdhouse right across the street is l- looking at him. It's watching him inside a birdhouse that went up is a camera. So this was your neighborhood. Yep. And tell us what we're seeing here. I see the okay, pretty so white birdhouse. Zooming into the little pretty white birdhouse, so it was just down the street, and you can see it's got two holes that it looks like the birds are going to go in and out of. And then I go up with a ladder, and I open the top of the birdhouse, and I climb up on the ladder. This is really klutzy video, but... <laughs> the big reveal. Yeah. Yeah. It's Inside, not a bird. It's not, not a seed. Bird, but a camera. It, there and, it is, black and white, right there. How did you know that that was not just a birdhouse? Because they dropped this note in the letterbox of our next door neighbor saying, be careful who you're talking to. And I had been outside chatting with her in the driveway mm-hmm. the day before. And I went, okay, somehow they're watching me. Who sent you the note? A, a, like a, a good Samaritan? It was Samaritan? an anonymous note. That was, no, it was telling our neighbor, careful, don't oh. talk to those people. They're okay. bad people. And she brought the note to me and said, I think this is Scientology. And okay. I said, no, it is Scientology. Absolutely. It was unsigned, you know, just the Well, disparaging up you to your neighbors was part of it, right? Tell Absolutely. us what they did. Well, at both houses that we lived in, they went around to the neighbors and they said, oh, we're... We're conducting an investigation into this guy that moved into your neighborhood, and he is engaged in mortgage fraud. He's engaged in drug smuggling. He's engaged in – or they don't exactly say it like that. They do it – do you have any reason to believe that he might be engaged in – it's such it's so obvious. <laughs> so that's terrible. Did, did you then go around to all your neighbors and say, "I just want to tell you, I left the Church, the church of Scientology, and it comes with some baggage." Yeah, I did. And in fact, it turns out that the next door neighbor in that house was an someone who had escaped another cult. Oh, and they were oh, like, "Oh, we totally get it." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's even worse than this because when I read about the woman down the street with the sun, that's crazy. Tell us about her. Okay, that was a spy that was planted. They rented a house that was just like three houses away that had an eye line to the front of our house, and they installed cameras under the eaves and 
put a woman in there who had a child that was the same age or similar age to the Christie's son at the time, Shane. Your second wife's son from another marriage. Yes. Another and we would go out and walk the dog and with the with Shane and and we would walk past the house and she started sort of appearing and oh hi and you know I've got a kid too and maybe our kids could play together and you know it was sort of like un un not not abnormal and mm -hmm. had been very carefully set up that way but what happened was uh, we moved and she had given us this whole stob story about how she'd had a car accident and she, you know, her uncle was paying the rent for the house and it was a house that he owned and he lived in New York and she was blah, 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 blah like this whole elaborate story. And then we moved right before Jack was born. Well, my now 10 year old son, we moved and suddenly she had to move into the same neighborhood oh, that we my. were in. And Christy, my wife says, Oh, I just realized she's a plant. She's like a spy. So Christy sends her, being very direct, she sends her a text and says, Heather, I know what you're up to, and you shouldn't be working for those people. Or some, you know, words like that. And yeah. she responds, I have no idea what you're talking about. You believe something, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, she just kept persisting, and eventually she just went away. Mm. Okay. Megan, you're not going to believe this. Mm. This woman was actually a, the, one of two women who were there. The other one we actually interviewed on the Aftermath show. The no. woman who had placed GPS tracking on our cars and et cetera, et cetera. But Heather, we saw her. Christy and I went to a Jack Johnson concert in Tampa, and as we were walking out, she was one of the ushers. And I said, oh, my God, that's Heather. <laughs> and Christy, oh, yeah, it is. So we walked back in and said, hi, Heather, how are you? And she said, I am so terribly sorry for what I did. No I had no idea... I was convinced, blah, 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 blah. It was like the guy that had recruited her was the same guy that recruited the woman who was on the aftermath, and he had a relationship with her. He went around and found these women, and he had like five women and that he had children with who Did he Did she had know recruited. she was working for Scientology? Was the guy definitely working for Scientology? He was definitely working for Scientology. That guy was the guy who was arrested following Ron Miscavige Sr. when he wrote his book. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, David Miscavige, according to David Miscavige's, Miscavige's own dad, Ron, David has had the dad surveilled, followed, he did not escape any of this bizarre treatment right. just because he was the dad of the of the, the head <laughs> like of the I church. Like I said, family is always second, Megan. Family oh is God. always second. It's so crazy. I just want to remind the audience, this is a tax-exempt organization. This, this organization is treated like a church, like a religion. They don't pay taxes. They've got over $3 billion. And this is how Mike alleges, and so many ex-Scientologists do as well, they use their money, your money. That's your money. Yeah. All Every right? American taxpayer is subsidizing Scientology to hire private investigators, buy thousands of URLs. Who is Mike Rinder? Who is Leah Remini? Who is uh, like every URL you can possibly buy? Produce videos, smear videos, and hire lawyers to send crap letters. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern-day world. From blue light glasses to red light therapy to EMF management and circadian-friendly lighting, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern-day way of life effortlessly. Now, their glasses come in non-prescription, prescription, and in reading options. Bond Charge also has other amazing products like low blue light bulbs, red light therapy devices, EMF 5G protection, and 100% blackout sleep masks, all backed by science. 
They can ship worldwide in rapid time. And most importantly, they have easy returns and exchanges. Go to bondcharge.com slash MK and use that coupon code MK to save 20% off your order. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash MK and use coupon code MK to save 20%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.